This is the Land Acquisition Commission uh, quarterly meeting. My name is Mike Widmer. I'm the chairman of the Land Acquisition Commission meeting. Today's date is Wednesday, October 21st. It is 6.17 and we are starting our meeting. Um, we just called the meeting to order. Nick Mirabli has been appointed as the uh, voting, voting alternate for Tara Hawley and we just said the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we will now move on to approval of last meeting's minutes. Um, we have the minutes from July 22nd. I did send those out to everyone. Um, is there a motion? I make a motion to pass the uh, minute to pass the minutes of the July 22nd meeting. Nick Morabalu. Great, thanks, Nick. Is there a second? Second. Second. This is Kenny Vickers. Thank you, Trey. Is that Trey? Yes. Oh, great. Trey, Trey is here. Terrific. Thanks for being Trey. here. Um, is there any discussion on the July 22nd minutes? With no discussions, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor uh, of the motion of approving the minutes from July 22nd, say aye. 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 All those opposed? The minutes pass unanimously. Thank you, folks, for that. Um, moving swiftly through our, our agenda, uh, Chairman's Report. So, hey, thanks, for everyone, for being here. We do meet uh, on a quarterly basis. So um, these, you know, four times a year, it's, it's, it's good to get everyone together, still adjusting to these virtual meetings. We did not have our, our spring meeting, um, and this is our second call-in meeting. I don't know about you guys, but I've been doing a lot of virtual calls, Teams, and Zoom, um, which has its pluses and minuses. Um, would actually love to see this call get moved to a kind of a virtual video meeting, but uh, for now it'll be just on the phone. So thank you for being here, and thank you for your time. Um, a couple of things I'm going to run through just from my point of view. Uh, following last month, last quarter's meeting in July, um, Pansy Road, the, the, the farm on Pansy Road, 220 Pansy Road, came up um, because it was put on the market by the owner, John Penagudi. Um, it's a nine-acre piece of property, primarily wetlands, uh, behind uh, what's well, near um, Osborne Hill School, kind of behind the old Navy uh, complex uh, and Pansy Road. It's a farm that's been there for a long time. It's got an iconic red barn on it. Um, I happen to live in that neighborhood. Um, and we kind of immediately, there was a lot of talk about it. And Cassandra, maybe you can jump in uh, in a moment. But um, we were asked to kind of take a look at it. It never, virtually, it never formally came before this commission, uh, nor were we asked to, to discuss it. But I want to kind of bring you guys up to speed on it. Um, the end result is that the property has now been taken off the market. Uh, by the owner, um, he had it on the market for 925. Uh, it's I think it was appraised at close to eight, so it was above um, the appraised value. Um, and there was and that what I did was reach out to a couple of different people. One, um, David Brand from the Aspect Land Trust, um, to get his uh, input and uh, maybe his participation in looking at the property and we did walk the property. Um, I also reached out to Brenda Kupchik, our first selectman, and had a meeting in September with her and with David Brandt, uh, the Aspect Land Trust, and Brian Carey to just talk about ideas uh, on what the town could do if we were to look at maybe moving mm -hmm. forward uh, with that uh, potentially as, as an acquisition property. Um, end result was that the owner did take the property off the market for now. Uh, but I do think we are prepared, or at least initially had some discussion um, to look forward if that property was ever to come back on the market. Um, Cassandra, you were early involved. There was a petition that you developed, and I just checked it had over 600 signatures. So appreciate your effort on that. Uh, yeah, so basically, you know, I think that there's just a lot of um, community support for making sure especially on this end of town, if there is an opportunity to preserve some land, we need to go for it. You know, there's just a lot of development happening, and I think we can see over time the effects of that, especially from an environmental point of view. So I just think that if we do ever 
have the opportunity to move forward on this that, you know, you will get full support. Yeah, thanks. And I, you know, appreciate your, you know, initial, you know, um, activity with this. And there's definitely neighborhood and, and town-wide support, I think, for a property like that. I think the concern was that obviously, uh, even in the wake of High Street, if, everyone, if anyone knows the High Street property, um, with that being sold and, and being developed, um, that I think the last thing we wanted to see was perhaps another development of that kind of nature on Pansy Road near an elementary school. Um, it's been, uh, you know, that's not happening right now, but I think we're prepared maybe if it does come back up. So it was an initial kind of good fire drill. Um, end result is that uh, there's nothing going on with it at the moment. Do we know, Mike, why he took it off by any chance? I, I do, and I, I spoke with John. He's a, he is a neighbor. Um, he uh, didn't have a lot of activity or a lot of interest um, from uh, buyers uh, on the property. I think he's also – his family has lived on that property for multiple generations uh, grandparents and great grandparents, I believe, and I think he was looking to see maybe what kind of interest might be there, and there was not a lot. I think it was overpriced, um, but I think he's just taking it off for now. He's going to re- kind of reassess after the first year. Gotcha. Thank you. Can you also speak? Like I thought that you had mentioned that he is interest. He would be interested in it being preserved as a farm. Correct. Yeah, I mean, his, he would love to see it continue as a farm. He's not the actual farmer. He has a, a, a friend of theirs, a friend of the family's, Terry, that has that farm. And if, if anyone has not been by it, it's, it's, uh, it's a red barn, and behind it is there's a pasture with turkeys and goats and cows and sheep and ducks and <laughs> a lot of different uh, types of animals. Um, he would love to see it preserved as a farm, which is why I think he's interested in talking about preservation efforts, uh, his asking price, though, certainly was uh, over the top initially. Well, what was the number on Pansy? He was asking 925 for it. No, I mean the uh, property number. Oh, it's, not, it's uh, 220 Pansy Road. Yep. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to add on to that farm aspect of it. I think that um, there are definitely some interest about having educational um, opportunities on a farm from, like, I think the Mill Hill Committee, if I'm remembering correctly. But there is rumblings about town about needing, you know, a space where we can have educational opportunities relating to farming. Exactly. That was one of the... Items discussed, um, certainly, um, that I brought up to, to the first select, um, to, to Brenda, uh, about, uh, you look at Wakeman Farm in Westport as an example, um, an educational learning center with a community garden, perhaps. Um, it's within walking distance to an, to an elementary school. It's got a lot of, obviously, positives going for it. Um, so I think there's a lot of good ideas there. Um, we just need to be prepared next time it maybe does come back. Um, and hopefully uh, I've been able to establish a good connection with John on that. That's great. And is Brenda in support of it too? Let's say that again, Cassandra. I'm sorry. I said that's great. Is Brenda also in support of potentially, you know, if this comes on the market in the future, taking some action? I think certainly in support of, of looking at opportunities. Um, I think, you know, uh, there's a lot of work that would need to be done in, in terms of, you know, determining how to fund it. What, what, a, what a purchase price might be um, and what, what we would do with it um, and, and how it would be managed. But certainly I think there was interest. She, she took the time out to, to meet with me and uh, um, David Brand from Aspect Land Trust to really go through it. So I think in that aspect, uh, that was certainly positive interest. Excellent. And then the gentleman that you're speaking to, the neighbor, he lives in the White House on the property? He does, yes. John Pennegoody. Yeah, and they would sell the whole thing. Up, but that, his well, room, the main house and the barn, it's the whole property? It was. It was a, The whole nine acres was on the market, correct. Gotcha. Thank you. Is this an operating farm right now, Mike? It is. And what, are they, what is their primary use? It, it's, well, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hobby farm more than a – it's okay. it's, uh, it's a place where animals are, are kept, and uh, it's, I don't think it's a, a, a business – per se. Got it. Yeah, I mean, it's just interesting because I've 
coming out of the last meeting, and this is a little bit of an aside, but coming out of the last meeting where we were talking a little bit about funding overall and, you know, I brought up the idea of, hey, what about the cell tower and one or two open spaces that are large enough that nobody would see it? And we talked to Brian and he said, yeah, we've talked about that, market rates, whatever. I started kind of having other thoughts around what could we potentially leverage some of our current open space, and, and now I'm just, this is going to the wheels turning and I'm thinking out loud, but some of our current open space around things that are environmentally beneficial, um, that are sustainable solutions that we maybe could leverage open space for that also could potentially earn money for our budget and broader conservation. One of the ideas I had was farming bee farms, Christmas tree farms, things that are simple and can be small that we could potentially sure. say, hey, if we had a piece of land, rent out X number of acres to someone who needs a place to start, you know, a bee farm or a Christmas tree or vineyard, apples, whatever's like, you know, something that could work here that could take a fungible piece of land, either do a market rate lease or do something where the town could potentially take part ownership in in future earnings of a farm or something like that and, and make sure we have certain parameters around it that, you know, you've got to use sustainable methods, you've got to preserve the land, you've got to be a custodian of the land, and then, you know, it'll be something that benefits the town. And that's just kind of a, one idea I have. And if you think about something like this, like, hey, it's already land that's been cleared, that's been used as a farm, could maybe easily be converted. Is there something we could do there where we just need to do some outreach and find someone who's looking for space has – a business farm kind of opportunity in mind, and we can use this as a multi-use kind of space uh, for education and for potential earnings. And I know, you know, you're probably talking a, a small amount of earnings, but it's just something where I think we could start to think about, right? Like, is it alternative uses like that, or even things like, you know, some solar panels somewhere in the town, right. or, you know, open right. space that's not already used for recreation or things like that. How can we start thinking creatively about ways to use open space that's environmentally conscious and could potentially earn our conservation budget some money? Yeah, and Kevin, I, I, I appreciate those those thoughts. Um, really out of the box type thinking, and uh, you know, you, you look to Westport, and they do have the. Uh, Smith Richardson Tree Farm, I think, which they, they do sell Christmas trees out yeah, of, I right. think, seasonally. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you could look at, and again, far away from that, I don't know what sort of restrictions on are on our open space properties, and there could be restrictions. Uh, but, you know, up in Hoyden's Hill, there's, there's maybe that kind of open space for something like that. Um, this property at Pansy, if you're not familiar with it, definitely take a drive by. It's, it's a little, little bit more on the limited side in that it's, yeah. primarily, it's primarily wetlands. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, which does restrict any development on it, but it also right. uh, restricts also kind of the, the farming operation is definitely, uh, um, you know. Yeah, the, the it, investment would be huge to try to make it usable, right? It's all well. Yeah, but it's, it, 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 it's a good idea, and you're right. I mean, it's a, it, we are, you know, funds, you know, we, we do not have um, – we are not, you know, we're not funded very well, so obviously that, that's a good idea. Yeah, I think it's something as a group, if we could all think about in between now and our next meeting even, like what are some ideas we could all think about that could work here in town as alternative uses of space that are sustainable, additive to environmental custodianship, and potentially could earn money through our budget would be awesome. Sure. That's a good one. Definitely everyone should give that some thought. Cassandra, are you going to say something? I was just going to just quickly jump in and say just because it's wetlands doesn't mean that they can't develop it because you could see over on the 980 High Street Jet Estate that there was wetlands too. And because it's affordable housing, um, they could Get technically build on it. However, the judge is still um, fighting on that. So we'll get a final answer on that. But I just didn't want anyone to think like, oh, just because there's wetlands, it'll be protected. Good point. Well, I... Yeah, I, I would maybe need to clarify. I mean, I, I do think the 830-G um, allows a developer who is providing affordable housing to, to sidestep zoning laws, but certainly not uh, wetlands. Um, I think they're still restricted, certainly, by, by wetlands, uh, um, wetland laws and zonings. Um, environmental uh, restrictions. So I, I do think the property could not be fully developed, but I know what you're saying. Any other questions or thoughts on, on Pansy Road? 
Okay. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to mention that. That did come up uh, following our, our July meeting. The other two items, uh, as we look towards 2021, amazingly enough, um, we need to set our meetings up for um, next year. So I've looked at four dates. Again, we're going to meet quarterly right now, and then we will meet on an as-needed basis. If something does come up, we need to meet in between those. But our four quarterly dates would be, these would all be Wednesdays, and they'd all be at 6 p.m., January 20th, April 21st, July 21st, and October 20th. So I, those will be in the minutes, but the, the key one is January 20th, primarily the, the, the third Wednesday of each month. What was the one after January 20th? January 20th, April 21st. Thank you. July 21st, and then October 20th. Anyone have any conflicts? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, good. We'll expect full participation attendance. Um, at, at the January meeting, we will be having officer elections. Um, currently, I am chair. Jeff Galdenzi is, is vice chair. Uh, Adam Goodman is secretary. Um, we're open and uh, willing to, to uh, for any ideas if anyone does want to take a uh, officer position on this commission. Um, next year will be my final year uh, on the commission, uh, my eighth and final year. Um, and I will certainly chair again uh, if, if asked. Um, uh, so, uh, but certainly we will have officer elections in January. And then that, I think, is the end of my chairman comments. I will just, uh, Brian is not on with us today. Brian was double booked at 6 o'clock, so I typically would have him jump in with some, any updates or thoughts. Does anyone else have anything else they wanted to add um, or bring up during this time? Okay. With none said, we'll move swiftly along. We do not have any new business uh, in front of us. So we'll move on to old business. Um, and old business is really defined now down to three properties. Uh, 3581 Black Rock Turnpike, we did make a motion on at the last meeting. Um, the motion was to recommend, to favorably, re favorably recommend the sale of this property and bring it to uh, Fairfield Administration's attention. Um, I have not gotten any follow-up on that. Uh, so that uh, we'll you know, bring up and discuss at the January meeting. And really, it's kind of the same story for the next two as well. 3724 and 3726 Post Road are properties um, that were brought to our attention by the Sasquanag Southport um, organization uh, that are uh, basically two pieces of property that are adjacent to what was formerly up the Bulkley Pond um, and now Dry Marshland. Um, they uh, are properties that are in arrears, as, my, as I believe, in, in taxes. Um, property that, that would make sense for us to acquire because they are adjacent to the existing open space um, in that area. Uh, but again, do not have an update on that. Uh, so we will move on to 995 South Pine Creek, um, which is a property that actually came before this commission a year ago in October 2019. Um, and it had come before us because I think in the fall of 2019, uh, the property owner, um, Frank Sweeney, had brought it to the attention of the town that he was interested in, in selling it. Um, Mark Barnhart from the Department of Community and Economic Development uh, interacted with him and at the time said uh, that they, the town was not interested um, in purchasing the property, um, but that if he was interested in donating it, uh, he could, he declined, uh, it was brought before us. We at the, the October 2019 meeting, we made a motion, uh, we approved a motion uh, to recommend that conservation staff reach out to the property owners to ascertain in intentions to either donate or sell the property to, to the town and also to research property background including tax implications. Um, 
that you know we do need an update from from Brian on that. Um, but again, that's we've been kind of moving that from meeting to meeting. There hasn't been a whole lot of update there. I have spoken with the property owner Frank Sweeney. Um, he had it on the market for 299. It is a, an approved building lot on South Pine Creek Road. It is adjacent um, and near the entrance to the South Pine Creek Marshland open space. Um, and you know it would make sense. Um, the reality is is that uh, we don't have the funds, um, and certainly it would require maybe a, a state grant. Um, so you know it, while it's a nice piece of property and it might make sense for us. Um, at this time, uh, we don't have any you know, new information on it. So we will table that until the following meeting. Um, does anyone have any questions or thoughts uh, or ideas on the, on the three properties we just went over? Um, I'm wondering how hard is it to get a state grant? Has anyone on this board you know, tackled that process? Is that typically what Brian does? Yeah, I, I'll jump in. Um, Brian uh, certainly has um, been a, a key, you know, uh, facilitator of, of state grants. And, and Brian's been on board now for five or six years, I guess, uh, but certainly knows his way around the whole state grant process and has been able to, you know, ascertain funds to allow us to, to purchase property. Um, it's not an easy process. It's certainly, I think it's cumbersome. Um, and there's, there's windows and you have to fill out certainly paperwork and provide, um, um, you have to do, uh, um, we have to provide a lot of information on, on, on the individual individual property and then submit it to the state and then await you know, um, the, uh, the grants. But um, are you familiar with it, Cassandra? No, I'm not at all. So I was just wondering if that's something that is, are, as a board we should become familiar with and try to pursue it or is it just too, you know, not, not worth the energy? I, again, it's something that, that uh, I think is probably best undertaken by, by the staff on the, with the town. Um, we'd probably be a little bit out of our, our comfort zone in trying to, to do that for the town. And again, as, as commission members, um, the, the town is better equipped to certainly provide um, the, the necessary information. Um, you do have to go out and have uh, surveys done on the property. Um, and that, that requires funding, which again, that kind of comes through conservation typically. Um, but it's, you know, the, the grants are a key source of funding for us um, and a key facilitate, facilitator for us in purchasing any property. I sort of have an ignorant question here. Have we ever had funding? Is yes. Like that? <laughs> <laughs> But I, I, I speak from before my time on the commission. Um, okay. And it really goes back to when the Land Acquisition, Land Acquisition Commission was formed, I think, in 97, 98. Uh, there was funding in place provided, by, I think, both by the town and by the state. Um, and there were multiple properties purchased um, with that funding. Uh, you know, what we should be looking at, maybe even going back to Kevin with, you know, some ideas on, on how we should be acquiring funding and maybe even with Nick now on our board with RTM experience is, you know, should we be, you know, looking to the RTM to, um, or, you know, to our elected constituents within town, should there be some sort of funding mechanism for open space within the town? Um, I'm not, you know, again, it's, is it the right time? I'm not sure, but certainly open space is something that happens only once and then it's gone. Um, so I'm a big proponent of it. I know other towns, and maybe someone wants to take on a task, but if you look at a, a Darien or a Westport, um, some of those towns that are Greenwich, they have mechanisms in place, I think, for accruing funds for open space. Um, I'm not, whether it's through taxes or whether it's through real estate transactions, I'm not quite sure. But it might be something for us to pursue and look at. I know um, from the Affordable Housing Committee point of view that they were able to secure funding um, by having any new developers um, pay a permit fee. So I guess I'm just trying to say it is possible. We just have to think of an appropriate way. Right, and, and I, I, I will clarify that too. We, we do receive some funding. Uh, 
with with subdivisions, um, I think with every, and I, again, I, I would need to clarify this, but with every subdivision that's two or more lots or three or more lots, uh, there is a, a, a requirement to set aside open space. And a lot of developers who are unable to set aside open space have to provide a, a fee in lieu of open space. That fee is um, put aside for open space acquisition typically. Uh, so there is, some, there is a mechanism there with with subdivisions, but that's almost after the fact. So is there an account what? attached to that? Or where is that money collecting? Yeah, there there is. We have there there's a land acquisition fund. Land excuse me, land acquisition fund. Yeah, that's what I was just that's, going to say. So th there is that exactly how you just described it. There's a land acquisition fund money that's set aside for this. It is a, a fee in lieu if the developers don't allow a certain percentage of, lot, of that lot for open space. And sometimes they can because there's, there's an, you know, if it's a funky angle or if, it's, if the lot just doesn't lay out well for them to use that efficiently, um, and then they reluctantly uh, pay the fee or happily uh, pay the right. fee. Right. Um, if they're able to utilize the land. And if there's a piece that they can't utilize, they're happy to give it to us. Um, which is, you know, as you said, it's you can look at it either way. It is good to have the subdivisions with some open space there, um, but sometimes it's negligible, and it would be beneficial to have the money so that you can use it to acquire open space, to acquire land like this, that, you know, that we're discussing. So it's a good mechanism. We should see how much money is there. We should see how often it's used. It would be, it would be, it would be good to kind of research that and see how how that's developed over, say, the past five or ten years. You know, what percentage of the time are people providing open space? What percentage of the time are getting money? How much money are they getting annually? How is it used? Maybe some analysis. I could look into that. Right. And thank you, Nick. Um, is it possible to put that on the agenda for next time so we can take a look? Yeah. In fact, I, what I'll do um, following this meeting, I, I, Jim Went, uh, who works for the town, um, keeps the spreadsheet um, on the subdivisions. Um, and whether the subdivisions are providing a fee in lieu of open space set aside or if they're providing an open space set aside. Um, and just to, to note that the funds are provided once the actual property is transacted. So it, it, there are a lot of subdivisions in town that have been approved but haven't been built yet um, or subdivided. Uh, so that, that those funds don't actually transact until the lots are sold. Um, but I can send I can send that out, um, and I can also look into what the current balance of the land acquisition land acquisition fund is. I, I had a feeling it was about one hundred thirteen thousand dollars last time I checked. That as well. You said thirteen thousand. One 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 three. One one three. Yes. I, I think that I just wanted to add, I just feel a sense of urgency, and I know that I'm new to the board, so again, this might be naive, but I just think that there's just a lot of developments that are coming in along Black Rock Turnpike. I think it's something like a 1,000 plus units. So I think to balance, we need to be very proactive about what land we can acquire, if, I mean, if at all, but uh, I just think... Yeah, I think at the... <laughs> Um, I know some of us attended the meeting this winter. Sorry, just to interrupt. If you had something else to say, go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry, was that Kevin or Trey? Yeah, sorry. I was I kind of interrupted at the end there because Kevin, sorry, if you were trying to finish, go ahead and then I'll, I'll jump in. No, go ahead. Cassandra had something else to say. Okay. Um, no, no, just at the, at the town zoning and planning meeting this winter, I think some of the underlying thoughts there were growing the grand list but not at the expense of overpacking the town with developments right so i do think we can play a role in in that balance and i know there's a goal for both and and i think it's the old new york city conundrum like why never develop central park well because if you develop central park the value of the city goes down right so right. It's, you think of that in terms of the town well you can't develop all the open space otherwise the town doesn't become a valuable place to live right so i, I do think that whole theory is kind of where we can really insert ourselves and be beneficial. Yeah, uh, agreed. Um, and and I, I agree that, you know, I'd love us to be more proactive. Um, 
you know, but just a reminder, we, you know, our, our mission is to really advise. We're, we're an advisory commission um, mm-hmm. that, you know, it, properties put before us from the selectmen that, you know, let us know what you think. Um, and that's, that's kind of the extent of our authority. Um, I do think we could be more aggressive in maybe pushing properties in front of the selectmen, and that's what we should probably be doing, much like the Pansy Road property. Um, and I'm, I'm welcome to ideas on that um, and or initiating, initiating ideas on additional funding opportunities or devices or mechanisms that allow us to have the funds for us to be a little bit more proactive because I do think, and listen, we're, we're not unique in this, but most towns, uh, once the developers already bought the property, we're, we're too late. Um, yeah. And so one of the things we worked on years ago was trying to build more awareness for this commission that the fact that the town is interested in, in accepting donations or opportunities to, to purchase open space. Um, a lot of times I think families or, or you know, property owners believe that they you know, need to put it on the market, but maybe they should approach the town first. Um, and that requires us you know, building awareness for what we do um, and how we approach you know, our, our mission here. But we are, you know, by definition, an, an advisory commission, so we don't have a lot of authority to say we need to go buy this property. We can recommend it um, or we cannot recommend it, but that's, that's kind of where we are at with um, our charge. Additional questions or thoughts? Great discussion, really. Um, oh, I, you know what I wanted to add on? One thing that I know I'm doing is I'm really trying to pay close attention to um, the Wetlands Commission just to see yep. if any properties are coming up along those lines and kind of pay attention to what's circulating. Because, again, like you had said earlier, I think what happens frequently is by the time we get a hold of it, it's like the process is already halfway done, you know? So, like, if we could maybe pay attention to different uh, committees or, like, the the strategic committee would be an important one for us to have a seat at the table about. Um, I think that's a way also to spread the word. Agreed. And actually that, that was you approached me after the last meeting about kind of monitoring, you know, TPZ um, and or wetlands. Uh, but I think that's a great idea. Um, you know, if anyone else wants to take up a commission to, to kind of keep an eye on, um, I think it makes total sense for us to, to monitor what is being brought before the town. I totally understand that's like a time commitment, but I've been finding on the wetlands thing, I can just browse the agenda beforehand and kind of tell, okay, is this something I really need to listen into or not? Right. Have, have you, are those on the, uh, are those on channel 79 or 78 or you've been listening in? Um, I've been listening in, but they keep getting canceled lately. So not much is happening. With conservation. Yeah. Right. There is an important one coming up, though, but it just got canceled today. So I will report back, you know, if I hear anything. But like I said, it's, there's not a lot happening right now. Yeah. I mean, listen, a lot of what we do and a lot of what I've, you know, we've done over the past number of years is just keep our eyes wide open um, and our ears open, I guess, too, for uh, what we see. And, and, um, and I think what we can do, you know, uh, proactively is just try to raise awareness or Again, I think following on the Pansy Road example is just to maybe move it forward in front of the town if, if we believe it makes sense and not wait for it to come before us. So um, open to any and all, the, all ideas like that. Great. Uh, any additional thoughts, ideas, comments? Okay. Um, again, that was so that's our old business. Our, our next agenda item is adjournment. So, um, thank you all for your time. I appreciate um, your commitment. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Cassandra, thank you. Second. Goodman seconded. Thank you, Adam. Uh, and all those in favor? Aye. 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 It, we motion to adjourn. Uh, thank you all again. Appreciate the uh, the time. We will meet again after the first of the year. Um, I will follow up with an email with a couple of different things from tonight's discussion. Uh,
please reach out to me uh, if, if you need anything or you have any ideas. Uh, but let's, let's keep the communication open. Um, and uh, thanks. I'll have a great night. Talk Thank to you, you in 20, 2021. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Thank you, Mike.